Welcome back, dear learners. In this exciting installment of our Grade 12 Calculus and Vectors MCV4U series, we're delving into the seamless connection between limit and continuity. In Part 1, we grasped the significance of limits in calculus and learned valuable techniques to evaluate them. Part 2 took us further with more examples to strengthen our understanding. Now, in Part 3, we unlock the key to a smoother mathematical journey as we explore limit and continuity hand in hand. Description in this captivating video, we bring you part three of lesson two, where the magic of mathematics unfolds. Limit and continuity go hand in hand, and in this lesson, we'll uncover how these concepts are intricately linked. Continuity is the secret sauce that keeps functions flowing effortlessly. We'll learn how limits play an integral role in determining continuity, and how this understanding can help us analyze and predict the behavior of functions. Our dedicated team at Gifted Academy Tutors has thoughtfully crafted this lesson to make the learning experience seamless and enjoyable. Real-world applications and illustrative examples will accompany us on this mathematical journey. Whether you're a student preparing for exams or an enthusiast seeking to deepen your math skills, this video is designed for learners of all levels. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Join us now for Lesson 2. Part 3. Limit and Continuity, Where Mathematics Meets Continuity. Let's embark on this transformative mathematical adventure together. Now we are starting our next topic. It is the fourth topic of the chapter. Limits and Continuity. For a continuous function, if we look at the graph of a function, so it is the graph graph of function it is without breaks or jumps or gaps if you look at few examples If you look at this example, we found there is no discontinuity in this graph. It is continuous, there is no gaps or no jumps. Similarly, if you take another example, where we have a graph there is a function which is defined like this at this point it contains this value so there is jump so this is the function fx and this is x similarly it is x and fx so at this particular value you can say it is x equal to some value a at x equal to a you will find there is some jump between the value so we will say this is a continuous function But this is a discontinuous function because of a jump. Similarly, if we have some point of a function at the point, 
the function is not defined so the function will be called out as a discontinuous function if we take an example there is a function it is a asymptote function this is defined like this and it takes the infinite value at this point at this point this function is not defined oh it takes the infinite value at this point so this function is also discontinuous and this is it is called as infinite discontinuity for function fx x this is a discontinuous function because it has a jump discontinuity and we might have some point discontinuity if the function has some particular point at which it is not defined like there is a function and it is not defined at a particular point it is not defined here it is a hole so this function is not defined at this particular point so we call it as point discontinuity now how we can define the continuity at a point continuity at a if we have a function and we want to define the continuity of that function at a particular point so we can use the function fx is continuous at x is equal to a if the function value at this point f a is defined and and the limit x tends to a or x approaches to a fx is equal to fa so this is the condition if the function is continuous at point a otherwise otherwise fx is this continuous at x is equal to a so this is the continuity condition that must satisfy for the function if it is a continuous function the function fx is continuous at x is equal to a if the function value is defined at that particular point also we need to calculate that yes the limit is also exists for that point for calculating limit we have to calculate the left limit and the right right limit and then we calculate the continuity if you understand the same thing using a graph
so we can take any we can take a function fx like this is a function fx if we check the continuity at this particular point this is a and at this a point the function has some value f a then we will check the left limit and the right limit from the left and the right right and the left we go to the a and it also go to the f a so this is a positive this is a negative and the function moves towards the point if these conditions are satisfied that we have the limit value x approaches to a minus fx equal to limit x approaches to a plus fx and it is equal to f a then the function is continuous it is a continuous now we will take an example we have a function fx which is equal to x cube minus x and we have to check continuity at x equal to 2 so for the function x cube minus x we have to check the continuity at x equal to 2 so for that we will check first we will calculate the limit at x is equal to 2 so if we look the limit x approaches to 2 minus fx will be equal to it is 2 minus h cube it is 2 minus x cube minus x and we are approaching x approaching to 2 minus so we can say x equal to 2 minus means we can say it is x equal to 2 minus h and h approaches to 0 because h is very small value so we can say limit h approaches to 0 fx and we can replace x as 2 minus h cube minus 2 minus h if we play replace the h equal to 0 in this value so we will get limit x approaches to 2 minus fx here we will have 2 minus h will be limit h approaches to 0 f of 2 minus h and we place the h equal to 0 will we get we will get 2 cube minus 2 so the limit x approaches to 2 minus fx will be 
6. Similarly, we will get calculate limit x approaches to 2 positive f x which will be limit h approaches to 0 and x approaches to 2 plus h which will be x cube minus x because x approaches to 2 positive means x approaches to 2 plus h where h tends to 0 because it is 2 positive means the slightly more than the 2. So, if we replace the value of h If we place h approaches to 0, 2 plus h in the value of function, so we will get this. And we can substitute here the h equal to 0 because the h is tends to 0. So, we will get the limit x approaches to 2 positive fx as 2 cube minus 2 which is same as we get in the 2 minus it is 6 now we have two things the first thing we have two minus and two plus two things we have now we will get calculate the function value so function value at x equal to 2. So, f of 2 will be 2 cube minus 2 because we have f x as x cube minus x. So, again you will get f of 2 as 6 equation 3. If we compare equation 1, 2, 3, If we compare this equation 1, 2, 3, we will get limit x approaches to 2 minus fx equal to limit x approaches to 2 positive fx is same as the function value. So, we can say limit x approaches to 2 fx is equal to f of 2. So, we can conclude that hence the function is continuous at x equal to 2. So, in this question, first we calculated the limit, we calculated the limit at x equal to 2, then we calculated the function value at x equal to 2 and we compare and we got that equal. So, we can conclude that it is a continuous function.